based on what we um, shared so far um, or any um, anything that you want to add to what we looked at in the previous session about the ministry of the evangelist and we were looking specifically at the you know the message right the gospel the, the message of the cross the power of the gospel um yeah so any any questions anything that uh, that you might want to add um you can take this time to do that something first huh? yeah sure uh i am i'm thankful to the lord that this mode of evangelism uh, uh depending rather considering this word that we are doing a search and a study on so though um evangelism is wholesome yeah, evangelism is wholesome yeah. in a way that it, it takes the whole the whole of you you are healed uh, physically you are healed emotionally you are healed spiritually so the evangelism is the whole as you look at the the message and the the method uh, all it will always come to everyone i was reading matthew 18 11 where he says that he has come to seek the lost and uh, it's, it's wholesome it is complete and uh, because it is complete it brings completeness to the one who has received it the one who has who has been saved thank you so much right right thank you charles yeah so true yeah it's for the whole person so uh, nothing is left undone you know his work was perfect and uh, and the more we see it you know the more we're able to appreciate uh, the lord's work on the cross and uh, and the more we are able to you know really um, we're so grateful for what he has done for us and and the beautiful thing is that uh, you know the more we dwell on it we see that he uh, he's such a uh, such a great god awesome god and what a great life you know uh, especially when you look at it and see that uh, not only did he save me and uh, heal me deliver me um and purchase me and and all that but he comes to dwell in me and and enable me to live um a life a righteous life and enable me to live that life and put to death the deeds of the body right uh, so close uh, dwelling in me and uh, giving me revelation and understanding and and being with me every step of the way being with us each one of us every step of the way you know what more could we ask for you know never alone never alone um, the god of heaven and earth uh, stepping out and coming in and dwelling with us in us and uh, so that our future is secure and uh, he's with us to encourage us every moment every day and what what more can we ask for right so uh, really uh, you know we begin to appreciate the beauty of the gospel and and the way that uh, he is uh, he loves us so much and and all we can do in response is thanksgiving and worship and all we can do is you know just resolve to be obedient resolve to be committed and uh, and consecrated and 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 live that life that he's leading us to live yeah anyone else Okay, so let's uh, <clears throat> let's move on. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, Chris. So I, go ahead. I'm just looking at uh, chapter uh, chapter four and uh, you know the uh, yeah. the history of evangelism and uh, you know I think the last part was mentioned. You mentioned it was mentioned about uh, you know TV evangelism. Uh, evangelism. Uh, yeah. Yes, and. Uh, from there also i think the you know the internet is also you know social media and all that uh, you know those, those those tools have also possibly also been used for evangelizing um so that is chapter 4 in chapter 5 you know, we are, we are talking about some of the fundamentals so my question is you know uh, over the years and at at the current time uh, i mean and till the current time um has evangelism uh you know how or rather how much has evangelism changed and what are some other challenges now which have you know possibly made evangelism uh 
uh, you know, different? Uh, is it more effective? So, just wanted to understand, you know, what what are you know how how is how, I mean, how, has it has it become has it evolved? Uh, you know, positively has it you know, and what are some of the negative aspects to it? Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, uh, from uh, what I what I've seen and experienced and uh, and also learned along the way, is just see that uh, this explosion of uh, you know the this media or usage and the and the very very fact that it has become so widely uh, available. You know, uh, I, I would have never thought that. Um, I remember the first time when you know uh, using a smartphone and uh, and. Uh, and I remember actually watching a video about technology, about pictures, you know, like expanding it and so on. I was like, wow, this is wonderful. And it was actually, uh, they were doing it on a big uh, screen kind of thing, right? It was, it is still not shrunk to become small. So it was on a big screen and they were expanding pictures and manipulating and, and doing all that with pictures. And, and within a year, I think it, it, it came into our hands. Right or on the phones where anybody can shoot pictures and and shoot videos and just send it within seconds to you know anywhere in the world or to a wider audience. So the, we've seen the expansion, which is exciting. You know the, the explosion of media and the scope. So it has actually expanded the scope for the gospel to be heard, right? Uh, but also we know that with that explosion of media and uh, the wide availability that it also comes with uh, fatigue, right? Media fatigue, um, just like any other thing, you know, if, even if it's advertising, you know, there's, you put everything, so you you need to do something to stand out and uh, be different and, and so on. So uh, it has its advantages. First, let me just talk about the advantages very quickly. You know, it, it is widespread. You reach anyone in the world. A lot of people are doing it, ministering, and, and a lot of testimonies, especially from the Islamic nations. Right? You see, uh, people have uh, heard the, I mean, watched the videos, watched testimonies. They were searching for answers. They had had supernatural experiences. Um, they've had, you know, dreams, and and people, uh, I mean, and, and they've had dreams. Uh, where supernatural encounter in dreams where, you know, they've. They didn't know it was the Lord Jesus, but they saw the Lord Jesus and they heard, uh, you know, certain uh, things being uh, declared to them that uh, the Lord Jesus is saying that I am the way, the truth, and the life. But uh, they didn't know scripture. They didn't know who it was. They, they have these recurrent dreams and they go back and then, then they watch this video and they hear you know, some testimony and then their lives are changed. So we, how is it possible? Because the media being so invasive, and uh, even though certain uh, nations restrict it, but it, it gets into the hands of people, you know, um, across boundaries. So in that way, evangelism has uh, really, uh, uh, you know, changed. Uh, the, I mean, uh, the way we do evangelism, you know, it, so it's an added thing, you know, rather than one-on-one -on -one or meeting uh, in person, you add this as well and the scope. Um, but the negative thing, or, uh, or the challenge, I would say, is uh, the fatigue that comes with it. You know, uh, because uh, everyone is saying, and then you're, you you need to cut through the clutter uh, to be able to. But I think God will do that. Uh, God will, because we forget that Holy Spirit is there. Uh, you know, as a big big factor in evangelism, we are we are partnering with Him in evangelism. So therefore, He will give the ideas to, and the strategies to be to be different in the message, and He's preparing the hearts of people to hear uh, the message. So um, so yeah, so that, that but that's a challenge to be creative, creative and relevant. Uh, not for the sake of being creative and relevant, but for really uh, understanding the need. Understanding the audience and uh, and and presenting the gospel accordingly, without losing you know what we talked about the fact that it is the power of God the fact that that you know it's the message of the cross it is foolishness but you know you still uh, do that and uh, you know when we uh, read about the message of the cross you see that the Jews were seeking after a sign you know something supernatural and uh, and the Greeks. Uh, what did they want? They wanted uh, what we see in you know First Corinthians one, uh, the same uh, scripture. Uh, we see that the Jews were uh, seeking after a sign. The Greeks after wisdom, because for them they they were intellectuals. You know they wanted something to really stimulate their thinking and imagination and so on. So they were there. Uh, they, uh, they, something about the thinking. Uh, you know something about you know the root of wisdom. But Paul goes on to say that uh, it is the same message, whether it's, you know, whether it's the audience is this or that, whatever they need is, this is the same message because Christ is the power of God, 
the supernatural, the demonstration, and also Christ, the wisdom of God, right? Which um, uh, which speaks to the to, to the mind, uh, to the rational, you know, thinking person, which addresses some of those, you know, the, the questions that are, that are troubling them. So it is. It seems like foolishness, but this is this is the thing which addresses both, and uh, and we can do it effectively through media. Um, so one of the things I've come to understand is, especially during the lockdown, is what whatever you know you can do in person. You know, the, the Holy Spirit is not constrained. Um, you know, uh, whether we do it digitally, online, or uh, in person. You know, the Holy Spirit. It's just we are we are constrained. Uh, we think, okay, how will it go? How will it be received, etc. But uh, the Holy Spirit is not. So, prophesying or you know, more, uh, praying for healing and people experiencing online. You know, you, people are experiencing that. And even this morning, like Charles was, uh, I think Charles has dropped the call. Anyway, um, so. You know, testifying to that, so um, so we we can do that, um, you know, digitally online. Um, so that's this group is great. Yeah. Okay, uh, Chris. Um. Hi. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Pastor. Right. I just want to add that you know, uh, you know, there have been uh, evangelists. Uh, I think there was a mention of uh, Benny Hinn. So I was, you know, I was just doing a little bit of research on 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 him, and uh, I've actually seen him uh, also preach uh, once when I when I was in Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I uh, what I was uh, surprised to to note was that you know he had his own version of the Bible, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, um, I mean, obviously that was also I guess uh, uh, you know a source of revenue because you know they were selling this this mm. bible so he had his own version of the bible so mm. coming back to you know the, the the fundamental of you know the the gospel uh, mm. you know how uh, you know how that how his version of the bible you know how it mapped to you know uh, mm. some of the uh, more traditional uh, versions so I just thought that okay so it was a like a contemporary version kind of thing or what was it any idea uh, I don't know very much about it. Or I'm, what I what I you know, what I've uh, I heard is that it's based on on the KJV uh, version, but it was it was a um, you know it was a very impressive looking uh, also a book you know uh, mm. and it had a, had a had a very very attractive uh, uh, you know cover and uh, it had a lot of a uh, lot of uh, commentaries uh, mm. you know from him which was which was ad added into it. So oh, okay. I'm not saying that there was anything wrong in it, but I, mm. I guess it was a, it was a different, um, it was a, it was his version of the Bible, which he expected all his, his, uh, his, uh, uh, you know, followers to, uh, to, uh, to, to buy as well as, you know, to mm. uh, use. Use. Okay. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. See, uh, like when we look at these, um, especially chapter four, when you look at all these names and all these people, uh, you know, they're not perfect people. You know, they have their faults. Uh, some of them, you know, uh, uh, frail human beings, like they had their limits, they had their uh, faults, they had their uh, whatever. Uh, but God still used them. And, and the thing is that uh, just like how he uses us, right? And uh, like, what happens is some of the faults and everything comes into high visibility because uh, especially with media especially when in, in today's time because everything is you know it's it's just there out there and people you know see it their lives are open and uh, so um, everything comes under that so so uh, people are able to see it and comment on it and you know uh, and discuss about it and so on so so the thing is that um, yeah uh, Again, we need to be careful. We need to be accountable, God first and foremost, and accountable is to people. And yes, uh, you know these uh, all this all these old I mean um, all these people whom God used. They have their own challenges. They have their own thing. God still use them, and they are still on a journey. You know, whoever is alive, they are still on the journey of uh, you know uh, uh, God uh, working in their lives. Uh, they are all works in progress. Yeah, that's true. Yes, uh, Rupa. Thank you, sir. I have. Uh, we live near a university, JNTU, in Anantapur, and okay. I have seen uh, this uh, Jehovah Witnesses that group uh, posting pamphlets mm -hmm. and small small booklets. 
inside the campus okay very beautifully done work uh, and many new believers are misled by that also that right. is, there is a chance of that also and the bible yeah, yeah. they have written also is different from yeah. the version we have so right. it's also good to know that people are like that around us and be careful thank you sir yeah yeah that's true yeah. yes prabhaka uh. thank you pastor pastor i have a question to minute to sort of yeah uh, so as we know that uh, uh, we are work in progress and our desire mm. to become like christ and you know we believe like revelation is a progressive uh, uh, so coming to sort of uh like i didn't know that sozo is a comprehensive word mm-hmm. like i came to know only when i joined by the first year i was so amazed i, I went and shared to most of the people who i know like, mm-hmm. it really touched me so are there any other word uh, in the bible or something that is comprehensive which we don't understand for example in trinity also mm-hmm. uh, it was progressive people didn't know in the beginning mm-hmm. it was there but it was not uh, like holy spirit also was not considered to be as equal in the beginning mm. so, so like that any other words that has comprehensive uh, words other than thought of pastor thank you right yeah so um, one of the word that i can think of is uh, you know shalom where uh, shalom was used uh, i mean uh, it's still used uh, as a greeting among the jewish people and shalom we say is um, you know it, it, predominantly peace right but then shalom is also uh, you know you see it's a par- parallel um yeah i think sam has put it down Sha- it's it's all again a parallel to something like zod so it's not like not just peace but also um uh, a whole uh, you know it, it also is, is well being it's also uh, connected to um, uh, prosperity and so on so if you do a word study of shalom that will be that'll be great you know in the restorative moves of god god has restored you know we we see restoration of theology right uh, restoration of truth um which seem to have been lost god restoring that uh, we also see a restoration of structure like church structure and uh, divine order and so on so we see that also you know coming back so um we see both that um, both these aspects um and when it comes to restoration of the truth we also uh, you know it's wonderful to see that uh, uh, about the gifts and about the role of the believer really the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry the fact that it is not uh, you know we as believers we are not just an audience you know in the church we're not here to just fill up the seats there and go back and and watch other superstars do the work of ministry uh, but really the, uh, the the ministry is about serving first and foremost there are no celebrities and superstars in ministry only uh, you know servants of a great god not great servants of god uh, but the fact that each of us as believers we are called to serve and we are called to be equipped uh, we are called equipped empowered to serve in uh, in whatever you know uh, whatever realm of influence god has placed us in and 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 all that is something that is being restorative you know uh, so it is um, you know when you when you when you were saying progress i was just thinking about the word res- restorative as well so um, yes uh, some of these things have been progressive in the sense of the work of the spirit the cross uh, you know people uh, on that side of the cross they were looking at it they had a shadow uh, you know partial understanding but now looking back we see that uh, the full import of that meaning and the sacrifice everything we understand and of course the work of uh, the work of the spirit and and so on the kingdom again um, this is another thing you know like uh, the rule and reign of god in our lives in in whatever we are the, the kingdom of god uh, the aspect of that kingdom and uh, which again we are we are studying about right uh, learning about yeah so these are some things yeah thank you for that question okay okay so um, yeah let's move on uh, we move on to uh, uh, uh so the so 
we looked at the gospel, the power of the cross, the message of the cross, and the power of the gospel. And we also see that the evan as an evangelist, some of the practical aspect is, okay, we, I, we understand these concepts, or we understand these truths, and, uh, I mean, we receive it and say, okay, now this is going to be part of me. Um, so I'm not just going there to tell a story, uh, you know, or tell about Jesus uh, and how he was and uh, how he was a good man and how much he loves loves us and so on. But I'm also, as I present the message, I know that this message is life changing because this message is powerful. It contains the power of God to snatch people out of the you know, the, wherever they are headed to, which is destruction and snatch it, you know, um, uh, snatch them for the, the purpose of the kingdom right? and place them in the kingdom. So this is uh, able, uh, the, this message is the power of God. And which means that as a minister of God, I become a vessel uh, through whom God works, right? Through whom God works the supernatural. So which means that I, Yes, God surprises me sometimes, but it'll be great if I'm equipped intentionally and to expect God to move and I cooperate with God. Let's say God says, okay, now you go and pray for that person and I want to, you know, um, I want to heal this person. I want to touch this person's body. I want to touch this person's mind. And, uh, and, and you know, if we are not, uh, if you have not read about it, if you have not studied and if you're not, uh, you know, expecting to move in it, our unrenewed mind, our unrenewed thinking will say, okay, God will do it anyway. You know, God can do it in many ways. God will do it. You go home and pray. Right? Where we don't step out and we don't minister by faith. Right? So, so the thing is, uh, that's the other aspect. So we develop the supernatural or develop and demonstrate the supernatural in our ministering as an evangelist. So the evangelist, one of the things is uh, is to develop the supernatural because that's, that's part and parcel because God wants to confirm. Uh, it's not just that the, the evangelist is, uh, you know, manufacturing something, but no, God wants to do it. God is more desirous of doing it. He wants to display his power. He wants to you know, heal that person. He wants to deliver that person. He wants to bring that wholesomeness to that person. He wants to save that person, right? He wants to sozo that person. So, uh, so one of the things is to expect God to use, expect God to use um, in in these areas. You know, in healing, in deliverance, in uh, uh, demonstration of power, and 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 not give up. You know, we we're learning, uh, so don't be discouraged if things don't happen. Uh, and if and things happen, give glory to God, and and keep going, keep learning, and uh, and keep moving in it. It is a, it is again a relationship. It flows out of relationship with God. It's not a formula, right? You know that. Uh, even though we we learn these truths, we learn these principles, we learn these precepts, uh, we know that it's not a formula. We know that we can use the name of Jesus, but we know that it's not a formula because we know of people who use the name of, you know, um, uh, Jesus, whom Paul preached, and and who tried to do something, and their, you know, their consequences were disastrous, right? So. We know uh, it flows from a place of relationship and intimacy, right? So it's a journey. So use, uh, us expect, be expectant uh, about uh, being used by God. You know, in uh, pray, uh, step out in faith, and and do it, right? And and don't stop, don't stop doing it. Um, uh, continue to look for opportunities. Continue to share, and uh, and God will move, right? and use the authority when it comes to deliverance. When it comes to uh, you know certain things, healing. Uh, there were times when when Jesus would issue a command. You know? uh, so understand that. Use the authority, and authority fro flows again uh, because of relationship. Right? Authority flows again because of relation, our relationship with the Lord Jesus and the place that he has exalted us, us to, to be seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so use that authority. Right? So we, it doesn't mean that we have to you know, be an arrogant person, proud person, but you be a confident person, confident in Christ and, uh, and humility that flows out of that place of uh, you know being confident confident in Christ and use the authority speak the word issue that command stand firm in faith and and watch God move
right? So use the authority. Um, yes, we, we you know we looked at it when we studied about the gifts that God is not partial. You know the gifts. Yes, He uses some in the ministry offices, and that's uh, that's the calling. That's what He's commissioned them to. But all believers, uh, God will work through. All believers are called to you know be. A spokesperson of the gospel, so to communicate the gospel, God, all believers um, can lay hands and pray over the sick, and all believers. It is for all the believers. Like the commission is for all the believers, uh, which we see in Matthew twenty-eight. It's for all believers, and these signs will follow those who believe, and uh, not just the ministry offices. These signs will follow those who believe. So, um, God will uh, work through. So. Um, Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will do this. In my name, they will do this. That The authority that I've given them, the position that I've given them, um, in my name, they will do this. Right? Okay. The other thing is to uh, develop the ability to present the gospel uh, to varied audiences. Now, now you know, that's... Uh, you know, to whoever, uh, the evangelist, typically, God takes, God orchestrates and places the evangelist uh, among those who need to hear. And it can be varied audiences. And if you look at Paul in his missionary journey, of course, he went to the synagogues and he shared. Uh, he would also go out and uh, he was in the town square he would preach. He was among the, uh, you know, the Greeks, who 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 were philosophers and and uh, people who exchanged ideas about new things. And God would take him there, and he would, you know, preach the gospel there. So develop the ability to uh, preach the gospel, to share the gospel to varied uh, uh, audiences. You know, now that's uh, that's something that we need to uh, share, uh, present. Uh, without without diluting the message, when we comprom when we compromise on the message, we are compromising on the truth. We are compromising on the power. Okay, uh, don't, don't, so don't intentionally do that. Right? That's the thing. Uh, well, oh, I forgot, and I kind I should you know many times we share. I oh I should have said that I I didn't. That's okay. God will God will still work. God will work through that, yeah, even through our you know uh, you know. Through our mistakes, God will still. But don't be, you know, when you know that something is, uh, uh, you know, something needs to be shared, and then you're intentionally holding back because of fear or whatever, you know, don't. Let's not do that, right? Um, so varied audiences, uh, you know, I, I can just think of, uh, you know, some some instances where I was I was talking about, share, you know, talking about the gospel, talking about Jesus, sharing the gospel, and I realized that wow, what a one, what a setting this is. <laughs> You know what is what a setting this is, and and one of the things was, uh, you know, uh, I think this was sometime uh, a couple of years back. It was a funeral, um, and there at the funeral, uh, people are you know of course crying, and the the, the coffin is there, and there's this ma man who was next to me, and he's just talking about about that person and saying you know uh, several things, and and then uh, he says. Uh, you know, you just so I was just asking, okay, how are you related? And this is how this person was, and all that. And then suddenly he said, you know, um, uh, but uh, nobody knows now what's going to happen, or uh, you know, something like that. I forget the exact words. Oh, he said, he said so. then we got to talking. You know, there is an assurance. You know, yeah, nobody. You know, but for those who are who know Jesus, there is a assurance. So I remember talking about the you know sharing about. Uh, sharing the gospel, how Jesus uh, died on the cross, and everything. then I asked him, you know, are you, a, you know, do, do you believe in Jesus? Then, then he said uh, something. He said, yeah, yeah, I'm a believer, but I have this fear. He said, I have this fear because you know, if I'm buried and you know, I'm just wondering, you know, what lab they put all this mud and cover me, and it might be dark. <laughs> uh, then we, you know, then we just, uh, talked about how. The minute you die, you close your eyes here, you open your eyes. You know, if you sleep uh, in Christ, you know, if you die in Christ, you, uh, you're you with him. You know, you're absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So uh, we talked about that, the assurance of that. And then um, 
And then from there, we moved to the cemetery and, and we finished the burial. And then, then I just prayed with him. I just asked him, you know, can I, can I just pray with you? And we, we prayed and prayed for that fear to leave, prayed for the assurance of the gospel, uh, you know, as, as a child of God. And, uh, and we, you know, it was wonderful. Right? So uh, though it wasn't someone who did not know Christ, but someone who knew Christ. And, um, and I remember another instance, again, uh, this is one-on-one -on -one again, I'm, I'm talking to, uh, this was a family, again, a, a, a situation where you know, someone has died or family member has died and uh, we're sitting there and, and uh, a relative of mine comes and asks, you know, you know how, how, can we, how can we console the family? You know, what do we say in such cases, you know, when these things happen, how do we how, console? Obviously, they've lost someone. How can I say that it's okay? Or how can I say that you'll be fine? Then again, you know, uh, we were having this conversation about Jesus, about the, the Holy Spirit, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the the assurance of person uh, uh, a person who is born again being in the presence of Jesus, and that same reality being available for the for the family that one day, just because this person put their faith in Jesus, now if this family puts their faith in Jesus, receives Jesus, that they will be in the presence of the Lord rejoicing and so on. So, uh, you know, so this person didn't actually, has not, not yet, she's not yet accepted the Lord, or at least, you know, that's what I think. But we had that, you know, a lot of questions from them. Then we forgot about, you know, the family and, and uh, you know, that whole thing, talking about, you know, what is it? What about those who do not know Christ? You know, what about them? And so these can be interesting places if we are expectant and, um, you know, if you're open uh, how to, and also equipped, you know, to share the gospel to varied, you know, uh, audiences. And one more, you know, I'll just share that. I'm not great with, you know, sharing with children, you know, because I had a very bad experience, uh, I mean, a challenging experience just ministering to kids, uh, you know, leading worship, nobody would listen, we are all, uh, you know, they are all getting uh, very, very, uh, so that's why I think Rupa was talking about uh, kids ministry and I was like, wow, you know, uh, you're talking to children and, you know, uh, so uh, for me, so I would really shy away from, you know, uh, ministering to kids. But this happened when our nephew, who was at that time, I think it was three years old. So he had come home and uh, I was just reading to him, like reading to him from uh, different, uh, we, we, we have this uh, series of books called, uh, these, these are comics actually. One side is a picture, one side is a thing. And, and about every day, kids playing this. And, but then it shares, the, uh, you know, talks about Jesus, talks about uh, receiving Jesus and so on towards the end of the story. So really uh, maybe some 10, 15 pages. So I was just still, you know, telling him the story. And uh, he was very attentive, just listening. Okay, so what is this? What is that? And, and, and at, at the end of it, um, you know, I just felt I had to ask him, you know. So I asked him, you know, do you want to invite Jesus into your heart? Uh, can, I, can we pray? Uh, you know, just like in that story, there's this person who invited Jesus. So I, he said, yeah, I want to do that. So then uh, right there in our, in our living room, we were sitting. And this is the first time, you know, with such a person who's so young. Um, so we, I said, you know, this is what uh, Jesus did for you. And so, um, will you pray after me? You repeat this prayer. He said, yes, yes, I'll do that. And, and so he, he prayed that prayer and, uh, and uh, it was so wonderful. You know, I, I had to stop myself from, uh, you know, breaking into tears because he'll think, oh, what is this? You know, some, he's, he's upset, but I was really, it was really tears of joy. And I was just trying hard, you know, holding back, um, even as he prayed that prayer and invited Jesus into his heart. And uh, so it's amazing. So for us to be ready, I know from, for me personally, uh, ministering to kids, uh, I know I need to work on that, right? I and mean, there's a, you know, uh, when there's an audience of young audience and I need to really know how to share the gospel. So all of us, you know, we can, um, we can work on this uh, area. Right, but uh, specifically those who are called for uh, the office of the evangelist. Right, so we 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 can work on this intentionally, saying, okay, um, you know, can I 
what is it? You know, can I know the language? Can I work on the language? Of course, I can speak through an interpreter, but can I, you know, work on the language myself? Can I understand the audience a little more? Um, and if it's this kind of an audience, you know, how do I, uh, how do I build that bridge? So it it will help, right? It will really help uh, uh, greatly and make the ministry even more effective. And knowing that God is there, right? uh, knowing that the Holy Spirit will lead us. Um, yeah. Okay, so here are some key areas to cover. I'm, I'm on page 14. So we're looking at page 14 and 15. Uh, when presenting the gospel message, I'm just going to kind of list that in from the notes. The existence of God and aspects of his nature. So, you know, the fact that God is there, you know, he is who you said he is, and he is there, he exists. Um, the whole problem of sin, its consequences, we can talk about that in very simple ways uh, for people to understand. Our need for a savior, you know, because there is sin, because we come into this world as people who are in need of a savior, you know, we need someone to save us. You know? We come as people who are disconnected from God. We come as people who are having a spirit which is dead to God, alive to sin. So our need for a savior. Then, then we, you know, um, we can talk about Jesus being our savior, healer, deliverer, miracle worker. Uh, Jesus being our only savior, that's very important again, right? Jesus being our only savior. Uh, God's promise and invitation, God's promise for salvation, and the fact that we are all invited to receive this from him, and how we repent and believe. Uh, repentance is, 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 yeah, it involves emotions, it need not involve emotions, right? Uh, we, uh, because remorse is what, uh, what it is, right? Uh, which, which might involve emotions, but it need not. Because you are you are really repenting is a decision that you take making about change, right? So uh, which might lead to us being emotive, but that's not an indicator of repentance. Okay, so I'm just sh sharing that that um, you know we don't need to you know, when we if we are leading people and if they don't you know cry or break down, that doesn't mean that they are you know. Uh, that's no indicator of uh, repentance. Uh, just because people cry, uh, that is also not an indicator of repentance. Repentance has to show in their lives, right? So repentance and uh, repentant belief, and this is how we respond to the uh, to the invitation. And you know, we can uh, we can also minister as a uh, as a, as led by the Spirit. Uh, minister to the person uh, in the gifts of the spirit. So these are some things to, for us to um, keep in mind when we are presenting the gospel uh, message. Right. Um, the other thing is to maintain our passion for for souls. Um, maintain a passion for people, really. You know, for people who are lost. Now, you know, there are all kinds of people. People are not exactly lovable at all times and i think you and i know that people uh, you know jesus came to save the sinner which means someone who is lost someone who is doing their own thing someone who's an enemy of god and an enemy of people also you know someone who's persecuting someone who's rude uh someone who is whom do you want to you you want to just avoid generally in life Right, you don't want to mess with, you know, this kind of people. But the thing is to maintain our passion, see people as how God sees them. Okay, that is how asking God for a revelation of people, you know, the things that they're doing. God, it's hurting your heart. Uh, give me the compassion. Right, uh, it can start with family members. Or maybe people have hurt us deeply, and say, with words, with actions, and, and so on. But uh, and and really, you know, exchange our hard-heartedness for God's God's heart of compassion for people. Um, and uh, you know, it's uh, and doing it in practical ways. Really, uh, when we encounter people who are uh, rude, who are impolite. Uh, to constantly remind us, hey, Jesus died for that person. Okay, uh, I'm not saying that we we we, are, we condone their work, you know, condone their sin uh, in any way, right? We're not affirming that that behavior, no. But 
really internally for ourselves to to come to that place of saying jesus died for this person jesus loves this person right now the way this person is behaving you know jesus loves and wants that person to come to the saving knowledge of christ um and to really ask god for it you know um, and and that can be life changing right so if you are in traffic if somebody is bothering you if somebody, you know constantly remind yourself hey jesus died for that person right and work on our flesh uh put our flesh to death <clears throat> uh one of the i, I remember once just uh, you know again in traffic i was going to uh, i think i i was going for some early morning meeting or something but i was driving it's on the flyover and back to back bumper to bumper traffic and we're all you know there and and suddenly you know just got put so much of uh, compassion for the city i was just looking around at, at the top of the flyover top of that bridge looking at the city and and there was so much of uh, compassion i just started I just started weeping really and it was strange you know in traffic and you know, i was feeling a little embarrassed and but the fact is that god put uh, compassion for the city you know how he sees the city uh, and despite its all its you know uh, politicians and all the limitations and all the traffic and all the ills of that city god loves the people in that city and uh, and really you know that put a uh, that really changed that day i i i still i remember that that was a defining moment of uh, you know of viewing people uh, viewing people viewing people who are broken viewing people who are rebellious viewing people who are defiant you know uh, who are shaking their fists at god uh, to view them had, as how god would see them right um, okay so maintaining the passion for souls the other thing is to learn how to equip the saints for similar ministry so so the thing is um, you know which is again something that we need to work on uh, as evangelists you know if uh, if we're doing something it's uh, you know sometimes we say right uh, i don't know how but i this is how i i mean I, i'm just doing it i really don't know okay. i can't explain to you but this is how i do it then what happens is you know god might be using us in wonderful ways but then you know it ends with us it ends with us you know god might be using us in different way, the ways he might have gifted us and maybe there are certain revelations certain things that uh, you know he has put in our hearts and that is touching people's lives and maybe he has empowered us in certain ways and um, but if we don't sit down to reflect and see you know what is it that God has done and if you take time actually we can you know we can maybe list it down maybe certain things maybe it has to do with your personal life uh, everything you know about your life and we can steward that okay we can steward that because paul says to the corinthian church he says that uh, we are i want you to see as we are stewards of the mysteries of god we are stewards of the mysteries of god which means overseers managers and it is important that a steward is found faithful faithful for what faithful to uh, an accountable faithful and accountable for well to receive it because god has given it uh, and i received it from him and to make sure that i you know whether it's communication whether it's handing over i do it faithfully i do it in a manner that brings him glory right and pass it on like passing on the baton to another generation right and and equipping others it's really about equipping others to do the work of ministry which when we read Ephesians 4:11 we see that that is one of the things that is one of the key uh, uh, or I would say instructions or key things that God wants the ministry office to do okay uh let's look at that uh, verse Ephesians 4 and verse 11 uh Ephesians 4 verse 11 okay and he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers okay verse 12 for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry so it's not only how I minister and how we minister of course being learning to do that but also when God uses us in ministry to be able to equip others to do the same thing 
okay to do the work of ministry that's that's a key thing okay so uh, it's scriptural it's biblical so um, some people might say okay why 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 is some training school why are, why is this person teaching others about this and why don't they just go win souls well that is part of the call to the ministry office to equip the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of christ verse 12. okay a couple of other things and then we'll close um uh, i just want to invert those points you know point seven to be point six be connected to a local church for um understand that this ministry office operates in a different way it involves uh, yes maybe meeting different groups of people maybe moving geographically maybe across nations uh, maybe from across towns right whatever but be connected to a local church you know where which is your base which is uh, you know which is your headquarters which is your you know where where's where's your home where have you where are you planted be connected to a local church it's very very important we see that in paul and uh, you know paul and barnabas when they um, go out they they go on the missionary journey they come back to antioch because antioch is where they were they were kind of planted they, they were others and if you remember you know when they were praying together when they ministered to the lord the lord set them apart and sent them so uh, so they came back and they shared with the church uh, whatever god had done for them and and everyone kind of uh, you know excuse me everyone uh, recognized that and and gave thanks to god for that so there is mutual accountability uh, when you're planted in a church and you're also coming back to a place to be refreshed by the fellowship of other believers by the spiritual input uh, you know, because we give and we receive, and that happens in in a context of community. So be connected to a local church. Okay. Now, when ministering to a local church, submit to the leadership of that local church. Like, let's say the pastor says, "Okay, uh, hey, in our church, we, uh, you know, we don't wear footwear. You know, we leave the footwear at the door. You know, just submit to that." And they say, "Okay." You know, sermon, the message is just 20 minutes. Just submit to that. Okay, don't say, you know, I'm I'm led by God to speak another 20 minutes. Well, if 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 it's really a stirring of the spirit of God, you can ask the pastor and say, you know, can I go another 20 minutes? Is it okay? Maybe they have you know very strong reasons why the message should be 20 minutes, right? Maybe it's all senior folks after 20 minutes who want to go, you know, they they can't sit. More than 20 minutes they maybe they have certain things but be submitted to the uh leadership of the local pastor right and also be sensitive to the local church order right the sense if if they stand and sing if they sit and sing if they kneel and sing you know for example be sensitive to the the order in which you do you know uh, every church has its own ways of you know it has its culture it has its uh, i'm talking about the you know, local church it has its uh, way of doing things um so it's okay just be sensitive as long as it's not against scripture you know be sensitive to that local church order and uh, and the message you know we will be building bridges right building bridges and uh, the message will not be you know the people will not be close to the mass message because of something that happened like this so be sensitive to the local church order and uh, submit to the leadership of the local church very important um well uh, another pub book that will be helpful is a book called divine order in the citywide church okay divine order in the citywide church it's there in the you know in our book list on the website um, yeah, divine order okay so um, that's that's helpful for for all the ministry i think you would have studied it uh, earlier equipping uh, or when you're studying about uh, foundations uh, ministers foundations you have this would have been a required reading um, so it's very very useful to go back to it time and again 
right and check okay so with that we come to the end of um, the practical aspects of the uh, ministry doing the ministry of the evangelist so we'll stop here and we'll pick it up um, next class which is on friday i guess so uh, between now and friday it'll be great if you can um, do that uh, research right uh, on how did the gospel come to my city okay so wherever you are living right now you know whichever country whichever city that you're part of where, where you're living right now um to do a research and say okay how did the gospel come here first okay who was it who brought the gospel who was it who uh, shared and how did it reach here okay uh, it'll be interesting to find out and uh, we'll also spend some time talking about it next class okay okay uh, thank you so much we'll stop here god bless we'll meet again later bye bye thank you sir thank you master see you bye bye god thank bless thank you master Bye, Emily. See you. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Right. Thank you, Pastor. Bye, bye. See you.